مدام داليا أه خديجة نور الهدى بوعيادي اي كارين روز اسكو مدام رقية دراوي الى tu les rejoins merci hello again I think this topic is very important for everyone uh, in our region actually worldwide uh, this panel this amazing women uh, we're going to share with us their, their knowledge their experience and this the, in these things uh, to start please uh, go, if you can introduce yourself guys and um, in a, in a minute or two, so we can start asking questions and please. Yeah, my name is Karen Rose. I think many of you know me as the wife of the US ambassador. But um, what you may not know is that uh, I'm a woman in tech and I've spent the last 20 years in technology. I started out uh, working in internet policy back in 1996, before many of you might have been born. Uh, I also worked at an internet startup and I spent then 10 years helping developing and emerging economies build internet infrastructure. And right now I currently do uh, internet technology policy and development consulting. Thank you. Um, I'm Dalia Abu Ghosh. Um, I'm uh, currently working as a tech team leader in an international company called STO. I'm also an instructor. Uh, I teach kids how to code. And I'm also a member of Facebook Developer Circles. I'm a colleague. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Khadija Norhuda Bouayadi. I am a software engineering graduate from University of Tlemcen. I am uh, working as a web developer at HD, Consult uh, HD Consulting uh, in Tlemcen. Also, I am facilitator of Scratch. It is a language to, to teach uh, kids how to code. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from this, like my professional uh, work, etc., I am uh, active. Uh, I am a member of GDG, Google Developers Group, and WTM. I am an ambassador of Women Tech Makers, so the program aims to encourage women to, uh, to join uh, tech fields and to give them more visibility and resources. Uh, I am also a facilitator at an initiative called uh, I Am Remarkable. So I Am Remarkable aims to, uh, to give more self-promotion and motivation for women and underrepresented groups. Yes. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Daiwa Rukaya. I am currently a master's student at the University of Science and Technology, Hwari Bumdian. I'm sorry for my voice. I'm a bit ill, so it's kind of weird. Uh, I'm an inventor, and I'm also the leader, the leader of an inventors group at my university. I am a GDG member, just like yourself. And uh, that's about it, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, let's start with Rukhaya. Okay. <laughs> sure. You're, in, uh, you're, at, you're still at the university, right? Yes, I'm a master's student. Okay, how, may, how, how do you see uh, the support for female students uh, in uh, our at the tech industry in general and at, the, at, at your school, at the uni university? At my university? Yes. I think, uh, well, my university is, I'm not going to say my university, but the people in there are very supportive for women. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, if I'm, if I'm, because I tend to be a part of a lot of projects and I tend to see people around. And I can tell you with confidence that almost 50% of the people contributing in the project are women. And right. women with positions, not just uh, maybe with small tasks, but women who are often uh, organizers or who have very important tasks that can determine the quality, the quality of the project or of the event. So I can say with confidence that they're very supportive of women. Very nice, thank you, Rukhaya. My next question is for uh, Karen. What, what steps should female do to be part of this uh, industry? Um, I think there's really two important things that um, women need to do. Number one is be really good in whatever your technical field is. If you are a network engineer, 
Try and be the best network engineer. Not the best woman network engineer, just the best network engineer, the best developer. So number one, be good at what you do. Number two, and what's equally important is, learn how to be a good leader. Because in any field that you're in, the technology, the tech skills are only gonna go so far. In any industry, you're working with people. And if you wanna go far, you have to learn how to work with, how to be a good team player, but also how to be a good leader. So put yourself forward for positions of leadership, whether it's a club, whether it's a, pr a project. Uh, learn now how to be a good leader, because those skills are much more important as you progress in your career. Thank you very much. Khadija. Why did you choose this career? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so I'm going to, to tell you about how I started, you know, how I joined the tech field. Sorry, ca can you hear? Thank you. So uh, before, before getting my baccalaureate exam, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, uh, to create my own video games because I was so addicted to playing video games. So yeah, so I joined the career. I started my, uh, my university uh, classes as a computer science. And I will be honest because everyone said that it would be hard for you. Uh, you need to work very hard. And I said, it's OK. I am interested in this domain. So if I want it and if I love it, so I will be good at it. So yeah, so I started university as a computer science student. And then I found cl uh, scientific clubs at university. I was very shy, and uh, I was always, you know, like hiding from from uh, from lights, etc. And then, and then I found GDG, so I joined GDG, and I found very supportive people. Some of them are here right now, uh, and they supported me. And then I found the initiative Women Tech Makers. Also, I found some women uh, very supportive, and very, uh, they encouraged me and they helped me. And uh, time by time, I started joining initiatives. I started organizing events. I started making talks and workshops. Uh, I started also traveling abroad and meeting other people. So uh, I benefited from the diversity of people, you know, meeting other people from other cultures. Uh, so they don't think the same way. Uh, they have other ideas different than yours. And here I am right now. <laughs> Very nice, impressive, thank you very much. Dalia, I, I'm not, actually I know all Dalia's answers, but I would love to, for her to share with you uh, her experience. Uh, tell us about a challenge or two, or something you've been through uh, in your career as um, a female developer. Actually, I have uh, one challenge. Uh, a while ago, I was working in a company where I was promised to be the tech team lead there. And then uh, suddenly a guy uh, came to work with us and the management there decided to give that position to him. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt uh, so devastated and upset. So I've decided to work uh, more on myself. So I started reading more, uh, work harder. Uh, after a while, um, the guy um, turned out that the guy wasn't that good. So. Uh, they gave me that position. Um, that was a challenge for me, I guess. Um, okay. One of the things, um, uh, Ahmed was my manager, by the way. <laughs> the management he, she was yeah. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the management I was talking about. Um, uh, you were one of, uh, you were uh, supportive. Uh, you gave me articles and you pushed me to to do more, to work harder. Thank you for that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dalia. Uh, a, 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 a very important question I think everyone uh, here know, wants to know, what kind of initiatives and how, and how people here can join for uh, the Women in Tech, for Khadija and Rukhaya, if you can share with us these initiatives and you were talking about and, and how can, can they join us? Yes, so I start uh, by Women Tech Makers. So okay. as I said, uh, Women Tech Makers is a Google program that tries to help women and encourage women to join tech field. And they give them, uh, they offer them visibility uh, resources. Uh, 
So uh, if any woman is here with us today, she can just uh, go to womentechmakers.com slash membership. She has to fill uh, a form and then she will benefit from, uh, from the resources. Sometimes you have scholarships, uh, sometimes you have like uh, free access to some uh, MOOCs, you know, MOOCs, uh, online courses. And yeah, uh, another initiative is I Am Remarkable. So sometimes we, we as women, you know, like we don't share, we don't talk a lot about our accomplishments. You know, we tend to, to you know, like imagine that our ac accomplishments will talk about us. Like I did this and this and this. My accomplishments will talk about me. Why do I have to, to mention that I did this and I am good at this? So it's very, I think it's very important to talk about what you did, what you accomplished in your life and to be proud of it. So I Am Remarkable is an initiative that uh, helps women to, and give them more self-promotion to talk about this, uh, this accomplishments and feel you know, self-confidence. So I am, I am Remarkable, there are some facilitators so uh, sometimes they open some sessions. So once the session is opened, anyone can, uh, you know, any girl, any woman can subscribe and uh, join the session. Right. Yes, I don't know if uh, Rukaya has. Rukaya, there's more, any more. Uh, um, I think she pretty much said everything <laughs> about the women tech makers in GDG. But if it's okay, I would like to tell you, you know, uh, a small detail that I was really attracted by what you said, the fact that we should be proud of what we do. And I would like to say that it took me a long journey of uh, lack of self-confidence and doubts and criticism to call myself an inventor. I've actually been in, an inventor since I was 16. I have a little uh, copybook at home where I just sketch my ideas and I write everything I have in mind. But never did I have the guts to call myself what I truly am. I am an inventor. And so I think it's really important to have confidence in yourself and to call yourself what you are. It doesn't matter what others say. As long as you know what you're doing is right, you know what you're capable of, you should have the confidence to call yourself remarkable inventor, a programmer, whatever it is, but you deserve it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think if anyone have a question, uh uh, so my question is, are there really any concrete examples of why women are at disadvantage in tech? Because in my day-to-day -day life, I don't see any real examples why we are at a dis disadvantage that doesn't touch men. And I believe that right now, the biggest, if not the only struggle that women particularly face is the belief that, uh, oh, I'm a woman, I need some special support. I am at a disadvantage, the sort of victim mentality. And I believe that women in tech is, ha, is becoming slowly sort of a myth. So is, are there really any concrete examples why women are at a disadvantage in tech field? Is it not a myth anymore? Is it any myth anymore? Thank you very much. A very important question. <laughs> Would you like to answer this, Karen? Um, you know, it's funny because I was asked not too long ago um, to do a short interview on women in tech and some of my other uh, female uh, counterparts and colleagues as well. And we actually answered a lot in the same is that we, we really didn't see that many particular barriers. I think in certain areas of technology, the challenges are more uh, pronounced, stronger than others. For example, in some areas of development, especially in some big companies, if it's you know 85% men that are developers, they can get a little bit, um, what's the word, like locker room, we call it locker room talk, like you know, they can be a little bit more aggressive. Um, and some women have had particular challenges. A lot of that has to do, I think, with not necessarily tech culture, but with corporate culture of where they are. Um, so I think in, in different areas it, it, it might be different, but I think you know the barriers that there were they're they're, they're being eroded, um, and you know the key is I think to be confident, to be good at what you do, um, to let your work speak for itself, but also to speak about your work um, as well. And um, you know I, I think a lot of women uh, have good experiences in the tech field. To add on this, uh, 
sadly, and at least I'm going to talk about Jordan, I'm not to, uh, going to talk about uh, any other country. Uh, business owners prefer to work with guys more than girls uh, for many reasons. But uh, to me, as a business owner, it's, there's no difference. Female developers, actually, Dahlia, when we worked together, she was better than a lot of uh, male developers. Uh, plus, the, the idea of being, uh, when, when women get married, they will stay at home. And th so this brings me to my next question about remote developers. Being a remote developer and working from home or from anywhere is a very important thing. We were discussing this, me and Dalia, last week in a, in a session in Jordan, Amman, about this specific topic. And Dalia have uh, a, c a couple of points about this. Maybe you can share with us your input about being a remote developer. Um, being a remote developer uh, have a set has a set of uh, pros and cons. Uh, one of uh, the benefits of being a remote developer is uh, the hourly cost. Um, you don't have to pay the developer for a full month. You just have to calculate the hours that they have worked on the uh, on a certain project and uh, pay, pay them for that. If you are a business owner, um, as a uh, as a worker, um, uh, you can have uh, multiple projects and you can work uh, on them uh, on your free time, uh, so you have another income. Um, uh, one of the cons is that uh, the lack of, uh, the lack of uh, knowledge of uh, the product. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, give a brief, uh, maybe more than uh, one, to, to, to the developer in order to understand what is your product. Um, uh, another barrier is the time zone and the language uh, may act as a communication barrier between you and the developer. Sure. Yeah, that's it. Very nice. Yes, and it's now we're working on something in, in, in Amman. It's called the, the uh, remote she developers. It's the idea of it, it for female developers uh, with kids or uh, married at home. They can work from their home with big in, in big companies and get paid similar as the uh, full-time uh, employee. It's a good initiative. Uh, it helped a lot, a lot of people. Plus, it's a good thing to open uh, doors for uh, freelancing or get, as Dali mentioned, more projects at the same time and get more income for yourself to, to, to benefit from. Uh, one last question from my side uh, for Karen. Uh, what do you think governments and uh, governments or private sectors should do to involve uh, females in the tech industry? Well, I, I worked for government for six years in early in my career. Um, I guess some of my comments have to do with government and, and the tech industry in general. You know, from, from my experience in government, we at that time realized that technology was really moving a lot faster than government, than government works. So one of the things that we did um, as government was really engage in um, technical meetings, engage in technical groups, um, you know, not as, not as high level VIPs, but as, as people there to learn as well. Um, because the industry is moving so quickly, um, we felt that we, we really needed to learn as much as uh, to, to really do our jobs well. So that was the number one thing that we did. Um, and when it comes to things like women in technology, again, I think really um, sort of uh, being there, uh, listening to women, listening to um, what women uh, are facing, uh, listening to their challenges is the n is really the number one thing. Um, you know, being engaged, being there, and and coming in with open ears and and listening to what the reality is on the ground. Thank you, thank you very much, Dijan Rukhaya, for sharing your experience with us. Uh, anyone, if you have any questions, uh, please. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure if you girls are going to stay uh, after this. Uh, thank you. <laughs>